All right, guys, here we are. We're going to be taking the action out of the stock. We're going to be working on this trigger. I'm going to give you a quick video on how to do that. See if we can take a pound or two off it, uh, get rid of the creep, all that kind of stuff. As long as it's a functional trigger, that's not going to throw me off target. That's all I care about, so nothing too fancy, but let's get started. All right, we have the action screws out of the action now. One thing I want to make note of is these were not tight. Um, usually you want to go 50-ish inch pounds, and these were probably at like 10 or 15. It took almost nothing to break these. So whenever you get a gun that you've never had before, definitely check the action screws and make sure they're tight because that will affect accuracy a lot. Anyway, moving on. The trigger assembly is right here. What we're going to do view for you guys is basically take this actual blade with the trigger itself out of here so to do that there's a little clip here we're going to move that clip push that pin out and then the trigger will come out and i'll show you what we're we'll working on a whole bunch of junk in here so anyway that's the next step Right, so here is the trigger itself we're going to be working on. Basically, there's a little spot right here. So you guys can see this. And that little spot is where a sear engages. So we'll hit up against that, and then as you pull the trigger, that sear slips off and then hits the firing pin. All that good stuff. So what our goal is just to make this as smooth as possible all here. Smooth out that quite a bit, smooth that out. And then probably take a coil or two off or replace the spring to get the actual trigger pull lower. So this will help with the smoothness of it. This will help with the weight of it. And see if we can do something with the over travel, but I'm not too concerned about that, to be honest. Yeah, as it's more of a hunting gun kind of style, that's not the end of the world. So next step, we'll clean this up and then I'll get my Dremel. Let's see if we can just polish up some parts here, along with the sear on the action. So that right there is a sear, and that's what, like I say, connects on it. So polish that, polish the face on here, and then try it out and see how it, see how it feels. All right, we got some more tools. So we have just a rag to keep things clean, the Dremel, some bits for the Dremel. And now we're going to get to work on actually polishing this up. All you're going to use for this is super simple. Whatever compound you have for polishing and then just a uh, cotton wheel there. So any cotton wheel can be big, can be small, on all different sizes and everything. But cotton wheel, buffing compound. We're going to clean this up at the start so you don't get a bunch of gunk in a wheel. And then go to town on it. So if we have 30 seconds of polishing on there, you can already see that that is the polished part. That is not polished. It's much shinier, much smoother. So that's the goal with this whole thing is to get this entire area here, all surfaces to get like that. So that's what I'm going to do. So the hardest part is going to be getting the inside here polished. See, I got the outside done. That only took a full minute to do all the outside there. But in this little channel where the sear actually touches it, it's going to definitely be tricky. So I'm going to switch wheels, see if I can get in there a little bit better so I can get that edge just a little smoother. All right, we're close, but I know I can get it better. So I'm gonna do one more wheel on here. Get in there a little bit deeper. All right, so that's looking way better now. Nice and polished. 
can see there the top is all polished on both sides and then in that actual recess as well it's also nice and polished in there the next step is going to be polishing where it contacts on here so it sits in like this and you can see that's where it engages on the sear so right on this piece here we're going to touch that up now and polish it and i think taking that one off might be a bit of a hassle no nope, it'll be easy so we're going to remove this spring and then take this pin out and push it up from this side and that will be it all right with this piece removed now we can polish up that sear shouldn't take too long again blast in my face with polishing compounds that's cool All right, so that was about probably a minute and a half on that one. And you can see now it is a nice polish on all five sides. So I hit the front, back, each side, then the actual face of it here as well. So now on that, it's this, you can see, it's just smooth metal on smooth metal. There's no more paint or grit or any coatings on it. So that'll just smoothen up the trigger. So we'll reinstall it and test it out, and then we'll adjust the spring for the weight. So we got that reinstalled there. We got the trigger back in. We don't need that E-clip on just yet. We're gonna be taking it apart again anyway to adjust the weight. So that you can keep off. It'll be a pain in the butt to install and take out every time. All right, so now you can see it function. I'm gonna pull the trigger, I'm gonna pull this down, and you'll see that this sear will then go to the rear, so let the firing pin go and the round go off. So still a lot of weight, but way smoother. The actual feel, there's no uh, spots where it catches, nothing hangs up, so very smooth on the pull. But now it is just heavy. So, to play with the weight of it, you can see that that spring is the only tension point on here. So when you pull it back, that spring is what you're fighting. So we'll just trim that. And what we'll do to trim that is just use some metal snippers, which I have right here. And we'll go about a coil to start, so an entire coil off of it. And then we'll do half coil increments from there. You can see all we removed is one coil of spring and that is it. We'll try it again. Here we're back installed. That's actually already lighter. Up oh, quite a bit. So it's actually not bad. We're gonna do one more half a coil, test it out. See what that does. So we're gonna say a half a coil. That's what I'm talking about. Half of one full round. I'm not sure you can see that too well, but that's all. All right, way better already. I'm gonna go one more half coil and that'll be it. It's honestly not in bad condition right now. Another trick that I have done in the past with Savage Axis I had a long time ago is you actually completely replace this spring so you take the screw out of the bottom where the spring screws out, I believe. Yeah, the spring just screws out of there. Then all you do is you put a ballpoint pen spring in place of this and it lightens it up quite a bit. You gotta be careful though, because you want enough tension on this where it doesn't just go off on its own. If that doesn't have enough tension and just dropping the gun can jostle that back and then it'll lose sear engagement, then it will go off anyway. So you gotta be careful. To keep it safe, as this is a hunting gun and not just a target gun, I don't need a half pound trigger. It doesn't make sense for it. So we'll just get it to where it's around that three pounds, something like that, to where I like to get hunting guns. And then that'll be good enough. So another half coil there. Let's fit it in again. 
I'm actually really happy with that. That is plenty good enough. You just double check that everything still functions proper. So it's safety. Go back there. All right, so safety's on. And there's no way that's going off no matter how much you move in any direction. Safety off. And it goes off. So what we're gonna do now is get this little E-clip back installed. Doesn't take much. And then we're going to install it back in the action. Okay, E-clip's installed. Again, just function test everything. Works perfect. Just before I do reinstall everything, I'm gonna give it all a good wipe, good clean. I just use brake clean. It's cheap, it's easy, everyone's got it. Um, I'm sure some guys use fancy gun stuff. Doesn't really matter, it's all the same. Just an evaporative cleaner that takes off all the dirt. Just a quick wipe is all it needs. Now, we have to reinstall it. Rear action screw, front action screw. I just get them both so that they are basically not loose. I don't tighten either one up first. Get them both so they're touching metal on metal. You can see there, it just stops. That one stops. And now, you get the torque wrench. So if you haven't used a torque wrench before, it's super simple. You have a whole bunch of little markings on here. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm gonna go to between 45 and 50 inch pounds. This is measured in inch pounds, not foot pounds. Do not use the torque wrench in foot pounds. You'll just strip these right out. Completely different. So you can see it's at 40. We're gonna go to between just 45, go 47 ish, and good enough. So we'll take that. We'll give it a little twist, a little twist. I do them even. You don't have to. A lot of guys I know do one fully and just do the other. But in the same concept as doing your car tire, you do them even, I find that there's just less chance of something getting get cockeyed in there. And then just verify, do each one again. So that's at 45 to 50, somewhere in there, inch pounds per screw. That alone will help with accuracy and consistency. Every time you take a gun apart, if you do that the same poundage, then it's gonna be very consistent. So, that's the action again. Everything works. Safety works. And the trigger pull. A world of difference, not even close. So that took me all of three minutes of work, all said and done from action out to action in. I think I've been in this room now for like 12 minutes. So it doesn't take long at all. Super effective results. We didn't change the safety of the trigger at all. We didn't change the actual dimensions of it at all, which is very important. All we did was weaken that spring, so there's less pull, and then we polished everything up, so it's just a very smooth pull. And it makes a world of difference. Um, yeah, the so same amount of creep as before, but because it's so smooth, there's no spots where it hangs up and feels heavy. It just comes back and you keep steady pressure on the trigger all the way to the rear. You don't even notice it. So, wicked. Really cool we could do that. Really happy with that. I know that that will work just fine for everything I want to do with this gun. No issues at all. Next step here will be doing the free floating of the barrel, just because it's pretty tight. Um, like I guess it might be technically free floating now. But if you look at this, the way it's designed, the second you put load on your bipod, it flexes that barrel, right? The second you move your bipod either direction, it flexes that barrel. So we're gonna be doing that because we're gonna be shooting in the real world and all that flex, every time it touches the barrel, you gonna screw up our accuracy. So we do not want that. So like I said, next step, super simple. Pull it out of the stock again, shave down each side of the stock and then keep on fitting it until we're happy and there's no more contact with 
any application of the bipod. Um, on this project, again, we're trying to get, I've decided about 500 yards for under 500 bucks. Right now, depends how you want to look at it. The whole package cost me 450 with the ammo. You exclude the ammo, it's 40 bucks a box right now in Canada. I'm only in the gun for 250 bucks. I got 200 bucks in ammo with it. So really, I think I did get a good deal on it. Um, I might just sell that ammo, to be honest with you, and get 200 bucks out of it, and then just use handloads right off the hop. But anyway, stay tuned for that. I'll decide on that. I might just sell the ammo and then be in the gun 250 bucks. Probably just use the same 178 grain ELDMs I use for everything and go from there. But anyway, stay tuned for that. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, I will be shooting more. It's really cold in Alberta right now. It's like minus 33 today, and then minus 40 tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day without wind chill. So for Fahrenheit guys, that's still minus 40. They're the same. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Don't want to get outside much. So we'll get all this ready for the range inside while it's cold outside. The second it warms up, we'll get out to the range and actually have some fun with it. All right, guys, again, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.